Hey guys, this is Jessica Gutierrez with Clean With Me Podcast. This is a podcast where I walk you through cleaning your house step by step. So let's clean together. Hey guys, so today's going to be a little bit different. I wanted to walk you through just a spring cleaning checklist of everything that I do when I'm doing my uh, kind of once or twice a year deep clean of my house. Um, It's getting close to summer and that's usually around the time I do my deep cleaning. So, and a couple of you requested it. So let's get started. Just a little disclaimer before we start. These are all suggestions. If you don't have time to get to all of these things, completely understand. Uh, This is just a checklist. Some of us can do this in all in one day because uh maybe our houses are small or we like for me I just moved into my house not that long ago so it's not as bad as when I lived in a house for you know five years so um if you need to spread this out over a few days or one day or a week you know that's completely up to you and your household size. Since I usually open the show with uh, doing laundry, we're going to talk about organizing your laundry room first or laundry area for those of us that don't have an actual room. But before we do that, let's go ahead and throw our hairs up in a bun. If you have long hair, maybe you open a window, light a candle, just get ready for the day. Uh, When I'm doing a deep cleaning session, it helps me to kind of do the bare minimum and just kind of get ready for the day. Obviously, we're probably going to be getting dirty, so I just put on some comfy clothes, uh, put my hair up, and make my house smell good. It usually triggers my brain into a cleaning mode since I do that every time I'm about to clean. And then once you're done with that, let's go ahead and head on to the laundry room. So, with the washer and dryer, uh, a lot of times it's in an area, maybe in your garage or something like that, where it gets really dusty. So, we want to go ahead and clean our washers and dryers every once in a blue moon. Sometimes we have stuff accumulate on top of the washers and dryers. So, if that's the case, take it all off of it um, and kind of throw away what you don't need, organize what you do need. Do a thorough dusting, make sure we're cleaning out any filters uh, and replacing them. The lint catcher vent, uh, make sure that's cleaned out. If you're physically able to move the washer and dryer and kind of sweep around it and behind it, you don't have to completely move it, just kind of adjust it. Get those socks or whatever miscellaneous things have fallen behind your dryer most people have that. I know I always have like a couple of stray socks. So, you know, just miscellaneous stuff like that. Just kind of, if you can't move it physically, do not hurt yourself. Just, um, take the broom and kind of sweep around it and sweep any miscellaneous stuff that has fallen back there and put it away where it goes. Now, if you have some kind of shelving or something in your washer and drying room, Um, you can take, I like to do things one shelf at a time when I'm organizing a closet or a shelf, I take everything off of the shelf, put it on the floor, go through it. I usually put it in piles of keeping, throwing away or donating, and then I put it back organized onto the shelf and then I start on the next shelf. And that's kind of what I do just to stay from, keep from getting overwhelmed because if I take everything off of every shelf right away then it's super overwhelming I get discouraged I don't always finish the project and once you're done with that um, we're going to move on to talking about the kitchen and I understand I'm going fast this is just a list of things if you need to write this down you can Um, if you need to pause it if you want to clean with me you can or if you want to just use this as a guideline go back and do it later you can do that as well so I'm going to move on to the kitchen there's a lot more stuff to talk about in the kitchen 
main thing here is cabinets and same concept as shelves we want to do one shelf one cabinet at a time take everything out of it uh, decide whether you use the item if you do, don't keep a bunch of uh, kitchen utensils and uh, containers that you're never going to use because they're just taking up space they'll make you your house feel more cluttered take away from valuable space that could be used for organization or something else that actually is used so just everything out of your cabinets one by one reorganize it place it back in the cabinets that way um and when you when you take everything out of the cabinets, make sure you're doing a thorough wipe down of the inside. That way, when you put it back, it's nice and clean and not dusty at all. And if you, uh, so moving on from the cabinets, if you have the cages on top of your stove, you know what I'm talking about, the little burner cages, a lot of times those get build up on it. You can either make a paste out of baking soda, leave that for like 30 minutes, or you can use a degreaser for 15 to 30 minutes on there. Um, there's a lot of different degreasers, whatever one you prefer. And then we want to, you want to get the backsplash as well. A lot of times uh, when we're cooking, some grease will splatter, so you can put degreaser on that. Um, I've mentioned this before, but in the crack between your oven and your countertops, sometimes uh, food or just, you know, gunk nastiness accumulates in the crack. So you can get a rag, wrap it around a butter knife and stick that butter knife in between the crack of uh, your countertop in the oven and get all that gunk out and clean that. If you have an electric stove top uh, and stuff has accumulated or built up on the stove top, they have special cleaners for that. Or you can use a degreaser, let it sit, and then scrub it with a hard sponge, something that you can really um, put some elbow grease into it with. Same thing for the inside of the oven. You might want to spray it with a form of degreaser, take the racks out of the oven, put it in your sink, spray it with degreaser, let it sit, scrub those with a sponge. You can scrub the inside of your um, oven with a sponge after you let it sit for like 30 minutes. If you have a self-cleaning oven, make sure, make sure you check, look inside before you start it. That way there's not any pans or miscellaneous stuff in your oven that can catch on fire because it does get really hot. I told you all the story about the one time my parents did that. They had some like nonstick pans in the oven and they turned on the self cleaning oven cycle and it caught on fire. <laughs> so we talked about cabinets, we talked about the oven. Now we want to clean out the microwave. Same thing, if it needs a degreaser, you can use that. If it just needs a basic cleaner and some scrubbing, you can do that. Let it sit for a few minutes and then go in and clean it. If you have stainless steel on your microwave, I do, or uh, your refrigerator, your kitchen sink. If uh, there's special cleaners for stainless steel so that you're not leaving streaks. If you don't have any on hand, you can just scrub them, and but you're probably going to have some streaks. You guys are doing awesome. We're co we've covered a lot of stuff already. I know I'm going quickly, but to actually do these things is going to take you a hot minute, so... I'm not allowing enough time for you guys to actually organize your entire kitchen, so do not worry if you're not getting it all done. This is just a guideline. Okay, so moving on to the uh, pantry. We talked about the cabinets where your pots and pans and such are, but what about your pantry with food? Same thing. We want to take it if you have a very large pantry with lots of food in it and you want to do it one shelf at a time, get everything down, um, throw out anything that's expired, reorganize it based on the type of food. Like I usually have a baking shelf, a shelf for um, canned goods, a shelf for canned fruit, 
canned veggies, uh, beans, you know, just by category. So things, the more organized, the easier it is for things to be found, the easier it is for us to cook and um, it just looks nicer as well. And same thing, once the shelf is cleared, wipe down the inside of the shelf before returning the items back onto the shelf organized. Moving on, we want to clean the inside of our refrigerator and freezer. So um, one shelf at a time, if we need to be taking out drawers and putting it into the sink to clean out and wash thoroughly, that's what I do. I take out the individual drawers one by one after cleaning them out and I wash them in the sink, dry them and then put them back in the refrigerator. Um, make sure we're throwing out anything that's expired. When I'm doing this, I go through everything uh, and especially things that I haven't used in a while and if they're expired, I throw them out. Do a thorough wipe down of the shelf or take it in the sink, clean it, dry it, put it back, and then put the stuff in that is good, uh, reorganized back into the refrigerator. Um, if you have a white refrigerator, you can just use regular uh, soap water rag on it um, or whatever you prefer to clean with. I like the Clorox disinfecting wipes. When I'm doing a heavy duty or clean, I tend to use a sponge. Like I said, I love the sponge daddy sponge because it gets not sponsored at all. I just prefer that one because it gets hard, uh, with cold water, warm with warm water, or warm, soft with warm water. So you can use it for different things and it's really durable. So I like to use sponges when I'm doing my deep clean that way. It gets a, uh, a more thorough clean. Once you're done with the inside of your refrigerator, do not forget the outside of your refrigerator. Have things accumulated on the top of your refrigerator. If not, no worries. Just give it a quick wipe down um, and get all that dust off. If stuff has accumulated on it, we want to go ahead and clear that off and put things away where they go. Wipe it down. And once we're done with our refrigerator, on top of the cabinets, same exact process as on top of the refrigerator. If you have any miscellaneous things on top of your cabinets, clear them off, put them into piles. Uh, I prefer nothing on top of my cabinets. It just looks nicer unless it's like a decoration. Probably don't put stuff on top of the cabinets if at all possible. I realize sometimes we just don't have much storage space, so we need to put stuff up there. But my policy is out of sight, out of mind. Um, I like to put things into cabinets as much as possible to get them out of plain view. Also, don't forget about your light fixtures and the fan or ceiling area maybe it's the bottom of your microwave on top of your stove a lot of times that can accumulate grease we might want to spray that with a degreaser or just give it a thorough wipe down with a sponge um, underneath my sink is where I put my cleaning products and those can get out of hand as well even your cleaning products can get unorganized so uh, if something is empty or close to being empty, you might want to toss it. Maybe you just need to f move things around and fix them around uh, to make it look nicer or fit more things. You can do that. So when we're done with all that, don't forget the light fixtures. Uh, those need to be wiped down and dusted. You know, just things that we wouldn't think to do on a regular basis and then we can do a very, very thorough mopping uh, and sweep and mop of your kitchen. A lot of times when I'm in a hurry, I'll use a Swiffer, but that doesn't always get a really good deep clean. I either like to go in with a uh, warm, wet rag on my hands and knees and wash it, but I have a very small kitchen. Or I get an actual mop and actually mop the floor with a mop instead of a Swiffer because that needs to be done every so often to really get all of the dirt and stuff off of the floor. Because a Swiffer makes the floor look nice, but it doesn't always get a really deep clean. 
So let's go ahead and move on to the living area. As far as the living area goes, we uh, don't forget about under your couch. We want to do the basic cleaning first, of course, uh, pick up um, the entire living area. And then, so if you're physically able to move the couch, do that at this time and get everything out from underneath your couch. Uh, if you're not physically able to, you can get a broom, use it as a tool to get everything out from underneath your couch. Um, throw this stuff away, put it away, whatever the case may be. And then same thing goes for inside your couch. You might want to take off your couch cushions or just clean. I have a leather couch right now, but when I had a cloth couch, I would use carpet cleaner to spot clean the couch. So you can do that. Make sure you're vacuuming out the couch, underneath the couch, underneath the couch cushions. You can use either your regular vacuum tube or hand vacuum, whatever you have on hand. If you're like, oh, I don't have either, which you probably should have a vacuum. But if you don't have a vacuum for whatever reason, you can sweep the crumbs and such off of the couch and then sweep them up later. Once you're done with your couch, if you have a table or a side table or anything like that that opens up and has drawers, make sure you go through that and organize anything that needs to be organized, throw away things that need to be thrown away, wipe on the inside, then put everything back in. Um, make sure you're wiping down everything in the house, your TV, TV stands, tables, uh, leather couch if you have one. Once we're done with the organizational uh, aspect of the living room, make sure we're disinfecting all of the light switches, um, lighting fixtures, ceiling fan. Uh, I do a wet dusting. That way a bunch of dust isn't flying through the air and it's collecting most of it. So I usually get a wet wipe and wipe off the fan. Be very careful not to fall when you're doing that, of course. And included in the living area, if you have an entryway coat closet that we're keeping miscellaneous stuff in, that might be a big project for some people, especially if you've lived in a house for a couple years. I know in my old house, uh, my coat closet area was getting out of control. So take everything out of the closet uh, little by little, shelf by shelf. Or if it's just one big closet with no shelves, you can just take it all out and go through everything. If you have not seen, touched it, and it's not sentimental in months, in like three months, then it might be time to part with that item. So keep that in mind when we're decluttering. If you have not, if you forgot you had something, it was not missed, you were not looking for it, we probably don't need it and we're probably able to donate that or throw that away. If you have any rugs in the entryway or the living area, vacuum those up very thoroughly. And then if you can, my dad growing up taught me to do this. He always, he ended up buying a shampooer because he loved shampooing the carpet. We had a lot of kid, my kids in our household growing up, so the carpet would get dirty very quickly. So he would rent shampooers from Albertsons or Walmart. To shampoo the carpet and get a really deep thorough clean on the carpet so that's great if you have kids you can rent those it, for those of you that don't know um, to buy them I think it's a couple hundred dollars he ended up saving up and buying one because he'd rented them so often that it was way more worth it to buy one but you will definitely get good use out of it especially if you have teenagers or big kids you can shampoo carpets, rugs, what have you. If you don't have anything like that and you don't feel like renting one, you can take your rugs outside, hit them against um, a wall or a fence or something like that, get all the dust out. If you need to hose it down with a hose, you can do that. Also, any window sills uh, or windows need to be wiped down with window cleaner or Windex. Uh, your window sills need to be wiped down. Make sure you're getting inside the window seals. The uh, walls might have splatter on them. You might need to clean off the walls. Um, and once you're done with your living areas and entryways, let's go ahead and move on to the bedroom. So with the bedroom, first of all, strip your bedding off. 
uh, and wash that like we usually do. And then um, when I'm doing my spring cleaning, I like to vacuum the mattress because over time, you know, it gets dead skin cells and a bunch of other gross stuff on it. So I like to do a vacuum of that every so often, every month or so. Oh, and sorry, I said this out of order, but do your um, wipe down of wet dusting of the ceiling fan before you vacuum off the bed because most likely it's underneath the ceiling fan. Uh, get all the dust off of that and then vacuum up your mattress. Now I know with me, I'm going to spend the bulk of my organization spring cleaning in my bedroom or garage um, because I'm going to have the most built up, um, you know, clothing and stuff that I'm going to have to go through in my closet and in my dressers. So this is probably going to take you the longest, but when you're done with your bed, um, underneath your bed, if I usually store uh, kid mat- extra kid mattresses underneath my bed, I have extra crib mattresses for when my friends' kids come spend the night and I pull them out for them to sleep on. So I don't have the problem personally of things being under my bed because I use them for storage. Um, And that's a great tip for people that tend to accumulate things underneath their bed. Uh, Try putting some small flat storage bins underneath your bed with um, maybe stuff that's out of season or sentimental things we don't want to keep things that we're never going to use but if you actually do need to store something under the bed and some flat storage containers is a great way to do that so things don't end up accumulating underneath your bed and if you have children that are older uh, teenagers preteens you can delegate for them at the same time to be doing this with their bedrooms Um, you know the The dusting, the going through the drawers underneath the bed. Every once in a while, you might have to go in there and pull everything out for them. My grandma used to always come over and do that growing up. She'd take everything out from under my bed and pull it out um, and tell me to organize it. So just like with the other rooms, this applies for kids' rooms, your room, any room. uh, One by one, go through each drawer and take everything out of the drawer, go through it, have a plastic bag nearby or make piles of donating, throwing away or keeping and just do one drawer at a time, one shelf at a time and get through your closet in your dressers. Um, now when you're doing this again, when at, Ever you're organizing, going through anything, and I know this sounds a little redundant going through each room and saying, you know, you need to go through this, you need to go through that, but that's really all organizing spring cleaning is, is just going through every single drawer and just going through things and deciding what you're going to get rid of. And if you're in a kid's room, uh, Something I definitely need to do in my spring cleaning is go through my kids' um, clothing and also their toys. So the toys that I am keeping, I'm going to sanitize just using soap and water. Or if you like to do it with bleach, you can do that. Bleach and water and just soak everything. Um, You need to stuff the animals that have gotten dirty. You might want to throw those in the wash. Definitely have to do a major purge of my kids' toys. Again, they just get out of hand because people give me things and I have a lot of hand-me-down toys and I feel obligated to keep things sometimes. But if they're not serving you, if your kid's not using them and they're just taking up space, you got to let it go. Even though it's hard, um, we can always come up with a thousand reasons to keep everything. I know I can. It's something I struggle with, but... Sometimes we just need to let it go and our house is going to be so much cleaner and uh, it's going to be so much easier to find things once we get rid of stuff. Because if we have too many clothes, too many toys, we can't find, they can, they're not going to be able to find their favorite toys. They're not going to be able to find clothes to wear. You're going to be sorting through 
80 pieces of clothing that you never wear just to find the three outfits that you do wear and that's what we're trying to avoid. Once you're done with the organizational aspect of the room, um, if you have any TVs, dressers, anything that need to be dusted, dust everything. If you need to wipe anything down, uh, pictures need to be dusted. If you need to wipe down walls, baseboards. Uh, if you have carpeting and you need to shampoo the carpet, that's why it's great to um, rent one of those shampooers. But yeah, like I said, uh, it's a little repetitive, but we want to do the same thing in every single room. Go through all the drawers, wipe down everything that needs to be wiped down, and just get rid of stuff. That's the major part of spring cleaning is getting rid of things. So from the bedrooms, we want to do the bathrooms as well. And with the bathrooms, we want to make sure we're getting all the places that are usually missed when we're doing our wiping down. You want to do your regular bleaching of the toilets, the bathtubs, the sinks, and um, throw away all the trash like usual. Something you might want to do is clean out your trash cans. I talk about doing that as needed, but if you're doing your spring cleaning, you might as well clean out your trash cans. Give it uh, a wipe down or rinse some out outside with the hose, uh, especially if they smell. And same thing as all the other rooms with the bathroom cabinet. We want to take things out one shelf at a time, go through them, get rid of stuff you don't need, and put it back. And like with the other rooms, uh, we want to wash the windows, um, the window sills, uh, wipe down all the dust. If you have a bathroom floor mat, you can throw that in the washer because that needs to be washed from time to time. So that's pretty much all I do. Uh, if you guys can think of anything else, go ahead and comment on my Facebook where I'm going to post this. Um, if you guys have a garage, I actually don't right now, but if you have a garage that needs to be gone through, that's an all-day project for most people. Especially if you've lived in the house for any amount, large amount of time. But same thing applies. You just do one segment of the garage at a, as a time, at a time, and uh, go through everything, organize things, get throw them away, and that's pretty much it. And if you don't know about the website, my mom is creating. Um, it's cleanwithmepodcast.com. You guys can go and visit the website. She doesn't have the written blog part up yet. That's coming soon, but if you want to check that out, feel free. I'm really excited about that. And if you guys would like to financially support the podcast, I'll put the link for my Patreon in the description. Thank y'all so much for cleaning with me. I really appreciate it. I hope this helped you a little bit um, in your cleaning endeavors. I hope your house gets nice and clean after this. Uh, And as always, happy cleaning.